Good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you for tuning in to episode 5 of your weekly cannabis show with Face. This is Burnt and Early. Um, before we get into the show, make sure you like, subscribe, and after, if you got something to say, please make sure you comment. I'm always interested in comments. Now, this week for the show, of course, we got stocks. We have a new synthetic cannabinoid we're going to talk about. Um, we have updates with Michigan and what they're doing in their cannabis industry. Also, we're going to talk about where and where you cannot smoke in the United States. Where is it legal and where is it not? So let's put it all out there so we can see. And a couple other things. So this week in stocks, uh, we saw a lot of positive growth with all five of our normal stocks we discussed. Um, so let's get it started. Uh, with OGI, we saw a positive growth of 2.99%. So they ended up at $1.72 this week. Also with Aurora Cannabis, they saw a positive growth of 5.69% this week. It ended up at $4.27. Canopy growth, another positive with 5.9% growth, ending them at $8.31. Um, Intercure Cannabis with positive growth at 2.16%, I should say, um, landing them at $7.10 per, per share. Um, Sundial Growers, we know that's normally the, the low end, the one that fluctuates the most, but that even had positive growth with them this week. They had um, positive growth of 2.77% and landed them at $0.77 cent a share. So they grew from 50 two weeks ago to $0.77 cent, um, this week. So once again, those who are interested in your stock markets with cannabis, once again, I believe that this will be the um, big stock of the future. So take your time. Put your money in. Steadily let it grow. Don't get scared by the fluctuations. It'll go up one week and go down another. Anything like this is going to be volatile, especially with a new crop that's battling on legislation on every state. So please be patient with your money. Be patient with your stocks and see where the future takes us. Um, oh, moving on. Um, before I get into anything, I just want to give a big shout out to the state of Michigan. Michigan, Michigan, Michigan. We know that recreational marijuana is legal in Michigan. Now, being that said, their tax revenue from cannabis has soared exponentially. So, being that said, Michigan has started to make plans currently right now to send $150 million to the school, to the public school and transportation funds there. Let me repeat that. Michigan has made plans, uh, currently in plans, to send $150 million from their cannabis tax dollars to public school and transportation funds. Let's just take a minute right there. That's one state, $150 million. There's 50 states. If every state did the same thing, how much better would the school system and transportation systems be? How many of y'all complain about your roads? How many complain about the schools? If we make this vote, make cannabis legal, and get these tax dollars in there, we could possibly, possibly start coming out of this national debt that we all complain about. Let's look at it. The way we've been doing it ain't working. The stuff we've been trying ain't working. Try something new, man. It's always said you're insane if you keep trying to solve the same problem with the same solution. The solution we've been doing ain't working. Let's try cannabis tax dollars, America. Let's try making cannabis fully legal in every state. And I guarantee our tax problems would not be the tax problems we have now. Our national debt would be cut significantly. With millions of dollars coming from one thing, cannabis. If Michigan can afford to give $150 million of their tax revenue just from can just from cannabis to their schools and transportation, that's something every state should be looking at. And states who are not doing it and states who are not legal should feel ashamed of themselves to let their people and their constituents suffer when they can make one change and have millions coming into your state just on tax revenue look into it people people who are in power listen to me i may just be a regular man who likes who who is a cannabis connoisseur but i'm no dummy and when it comes to this stuff that y'all overlooking this is the stuff that matters to the everyday common man moving on now as i was in my local um vape store uh I was going to get my cigars and look at see what other CBD stuff they had out. I was interested in getting some more TH, THCO. Um, but then I ran to something new, a new synthetic cannabinoid, HHC. So as I stood in there and talked to the um the young lady that worked in the store, she would give me a brief overview of what it was. Um, I was like, okay, that's pretty interesting. I didn't want to buy anything then because, once again, I always say before you put something into your body, do your adequate research before putting anything new 
synthetic or anything period food water substance into your body you need to do your research to know what's going into your temple um so i went home and did a couple did a little bit of research on hhc and what i found i figured i'd bring it to you guys so i can educate everyone as i educate myself so we all know what thc is so now we have hhc so let me get into it hhc first well, what does it stand for it stands for a hexahydrocannabinoid now we know thc is tetra hydrocannabinoid now hexa you already know something's different happening with the molecule process and the chemical process itself because you it, it, it went from tetra to hexa tetra to hexa so let's dig in deeper so hexa hydrocannabinoid just want to make sure i slow it down so everybody can know what i'm saying hexa hydrocannabinoid is a is a hydrogenated hydrogenated derivative of thc once again tetra hydrocannabinoid it is a natural occurring phytocannabinoid that has rarely been identified as a trace component in cannabis sativa. But, 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 it can also be produced synthetically by hydrogenating of cannabis extracts. Now, I've said this word hydrogenation a couple of times and with no explanation. Some people may not know what that is. It's a chemical process. Um, hydrogenation is the process of adding hydrogen molecules to a chemical substance. Um, in this case, when talking about cannabis, um, that's the process of adding an additional hydrogen molecule to the chemical base of THC, changing it from THC, making it HHC. Now, this process is not only used in the THC process or cannabis. Hydrogenation is the process that we use to turn vegetable oil into margarine. Once again, hydrogenation is the same process used to turn vegetable oil into margarine. So, not bad. But once again, we have a synthetic chemical or something, a synthetic cannabinoid, excuse me, brought into the atmosphere and brought into the society or the culture of um, cannabis. Now, after doing my research on it, it's not that bad. It's legal in every state currently. Um, as we know, there are currently some states are trying to ban Del Delta 8 because of the effects it's had on some of the consumers. Um, to that, I say, once again, research what you're putting in your body. Don't just buy something because you see it in the store and just want to, oh, I want to try to do some research before you put something in your body. Um, too many people are misinformed or just not smart. I'm, not, I'm saying this like that. I'm sorry, smart enough to just research what you're putting in your body so you have bad effects and then we're making laws or damning something, a substance which has therapeutic and beneficial properties to it as well. But being that some people don't do their natural research, natural research, we're going to ban it. But that's a totally different discussion. Um, now, HHC, after doing research on it, it's about 70 to 80% the potency of THC. It gives you this, most of the same euphoric effects as THC or Delta 9, but with that, it gives you a more relaxed feeling than it do, than Delta 8 does. Um, you can also, it's also used as a pain painkiller, pain reliever as well. So a lot of the same benefits you get from THC, Delta 8, and THCO, you find with HAC, the new synthetic cannabinoid um, derived from THC. Um, myself, kind of timid on it. Um, when I saw it first, it was in a flower form. And if you've seen Astro Rock before, it's kind of a white, whitish flower. Um, and that's what the HAC I was presented looked like too. Um, I may get it just to mix in with my cannabis to see what effect it has, just so I, I can further my knowledge and my knowledge base. Um, I've already done my research, so I know what it could potentially do to me. The same side effects that you may face with Delta 8 or Delta 9. It's the same thing you'll find with TACO and HAC. So it's not a real stretch as far as the the true natural plant with nothing synthetic derived from it. Um, if you know anything about chemistry, if you put cannabis extract in a centrifuge and spin it, you're going to separate, separate stuff anyway, and you can come with these different cannabinoids if you do further um, scientific things to it. But um, that's neither here nor there or, or on my topic for my show, so let's move on to the next thing. But before we move on, once again, HAC is a new thing out there. Please do your research before you put it in your body. Um, if you're just a con connoisseur and you just want to try a lot of different stuff just so you can build your knowledge base like myself, before you do, still research the subject matter. Um 
really wanted to know what I was putting in my body before I did anything with Delta 8, um, TACO. So before I even made my first purchase, I did my research, did my Googles. Um, so do your Googles, man. Do your research. Go do a little deep dive. Fall into the rabbit hole. So you want to make sure you have that adequate information. You will find contradictory information online because a lot of information that's not put out by scientific journals. A lot of uh, um, stuff is opinionated and it comes from a skewed point. Um, don't fall for those. If you read something from a skewed point, read something else from a different skewed point to battle each idea. You always want to find a middle ground when doing your research to have the best idea of what you're doing going forward. Um, so moving forward, we're going to see... Where can I smoke and where can I not smoke legally in the United States? Now, we know cannabis is not federally legal. So that means all states or provinces um, under United States control does not have the same regulation with it. But there are currently 20 states and provinces under United States control that recreational marijuana is fully legal in. So let's go through those now. We're going to start off with the home state, good old Virginia. We know um, this past year we came a long way. Um, we've been striving for a lot of marijuana reform and cannabis reform, and we're still in the process of trying to get um, the flower fully um, out to be sold right now. But with that battle still in hand, recreational and medicinal cannabis use is not illegal anymore. So me being a Virginia resident, that's good for me, great for me. Um, hopefully in these next states, I'll cover some of your states. If not, Hopefully it won't be on the other list. Um, there are six states that are not fully legal or have no cannabis um, use in them at all. Um, only six, and that's no medicinal and no uh, recreational. Sad for them, but we're going to get to them. So let's continue with uh, where I can legally smoke list. So once again, number, number one was Virginia. Number two is New Mexico. Number three, Connecticut. Number four, New York. Number five, New Jersey. Number six, Alaska. Seven, Montana. 8, Arizona, 9, Illinois, 10, Guam, Guam, Vermont, Oregon, Michigan, Nevada, Massachusetts, Maine, California, Washington, D.C., the District of Washington, or, excuse me, the District of Columbia, excuse me, Colorado, and also finally Washington State. Um, good 20 right there. Good 20. The rest of the states need to come along. The rest of the states are lagging behind with this fully legal cannabis stuff, man. I understand how you got your different legislations and the different stuff is going on. But at the end of the day, see what's best for your people and your dollars. Now let's move on to six states where it's fully illegal. I'm not going here because I'm a connoisseur. And where I go, I like to smoke. And I'm not getting myself in no trouble for nobody. So, these are the six states where I would not be traveling through or to. South Carolina, fully illegal. Tennessee, fully illegal. Alabama, still not there. Wyoming, still not there. Idaho, still not there. And South Dakota. Still not there. We need cannabis reform in these states, people. If you're able to vote and they bring it up to vote on, please vote. Your voice counts. And when it's something that you want, it really counts. So make sure you speak up. Make sure you speak out. Make sure you get cannabis reform rolling in your jurisdictions. Now, the rest of the states have a mix, mix of legislation between the medicinal side being good the recreational side still being bad. You got some states will only allow oils or the rubs. Please, the main thing all states need to see is the benefit of these tax dollars. We all know what money can do and what money can change. Money may not bring happiness, but money brings significant change. Significant and lasting change when it comes to a certain amount of revenue dollars. If Michigan can give $150 million just off its cannabis tax dollars? What can other states do? How about this? We make a challenge for every state that has fully legal marijuana. Let's see how much you can give and donate to your public schools and transportation funds just off the cannabis fund. I know out west places like California, y'all got millions and millions and millions to donate. But the cost of living is a little bit high out there, so it may fluctuate as far as how much you can. But in other states, other localities that... 
marijuana is fully legal in, please, people, step it up. Set the example. Be the leader so these other states where it's not legal can take a step forward and see the benefits of what they can do and what can be done if cannabis is legalized. It's not a drug. It never really was a drug. It's a plant that grew on earth since the beginning of time. Just like millions of other plants. It's a different plant. It's other plants I can go out here, pick, and have the same effect of effects and different effects as well. These plants grow wild. Cannabis grew wild. It was just somebody who picked it and found out what was going on and we started damning it in 19, around 1937. It's 2022, people. Let's, have, let's not have this 1937 mindset no more. We're trying to be progressive and move forward everything else in society. Let's keep cannabis on the forefront. Let's please see that this is the crop of the future. Invest your money. Invest your time. Do your research. This has been Face. Thank you for tuning in to episode five of Burning Early. Make sure you tune in to our podcast, the Partners Podcast, which can be found on YouTube, as well as Anchor.fm. Please make sure you like, subscribe, and leave a comment, man. If it's something that you know that I don't, that I haven't mentioned, please, each one teach one. Let's all grow our, our knowledge together. Thank you for tuning in. This has been Face. I'm out of here.